Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Fly! Today we're playing X-Plane 11, and I am going to be flying the Boeing 767-300ER. This is a pay payware plane. Uh, it is made by Flight Factor. Flight Factor produced by VMAX over here. Um, the thing with these planes is they're just as expensive as the freaking game itself, but they are real works of art over here. Um... That, I mean, maybe not this livery necessarily, but we're talking about 4K textures all over the place. Uh, a full interior that you can wander around in. Let's see, how can I do that? If I go inside and then I hit this mode and then I uh, uh, hit the wrong key after that and then try that again. If I do this and sort of pop inside, look at that. It's a full freaking airplane in here. What the heck? Why, why would this even be modeled? There's like... <laughs> You're never gonna see it while you play, but I freaking love the detail. Actually, I could um, I could save a view out the wing or something like that, uh, so that we can look at it while we play. Well, anyway, let's get back to this. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pull up your bus over here. This is part of the interface that you get with a lot of these pay wear planes. Uh, we're gonna bring up the passenger bus now. One thing I noticed, I don't know if it's the airport or what, but this passenger bus. Um, oh, it's just, okay. See, I thought it was poking into the ground, but no, it's just got, like, wheels that are mostly covered. Because, like, from this angle, is just me, or does it look like this bus, like, is half sunk into the ground? But no, it's fine. It's just got very little, tiny, like, sunken in wheels. I guess that's that's pretty good for, um, probably, um, what am I thinking? Like, uh, you know, making it easier to make it uh, wheelchair accessible and whatnot. Oh, that's quite cool. All right, so we've got our fuel truck out here. We've got the passenger bus. We've got the, the stairs. We are at Brussels Airport, but we're way, way out here. I know I know, we're not quite parked here. There's, there was a game issue with me reloading something and after recording for like an hour. And it, anyway, we're here instead of properly parked. Let's, let's pretend that this is where we're supposed to be instead of like the post pushback position. Shut up, it's fine. Anyway, we're not at a gate. We're out here. We're flying the 767. This is a wide body plane uh, by Boeing here. Uh, originally produced maybe starting in 81 or something like that, but it remains one of the uh, most, one of the most popular planes in the world. Uh, for lots of flights, whether we're talking about across the ocean, especially this is the ER model, extended range, um, whether we're, yeah, talking about across the ocean or, you know, just to hop in the skip away um, in a European country. So today we're flying from Brussels Airport in the imaginary country of Belgium, and we're going to be going to London Gatwick. Uh, a pretty short flight just to, just across the, the channel, basically. I mean, I don't know if that part of it counts as the channel or is that part of the North Sea? Listen, geography, not my thing. It's fine. Anywho, this video, I should warn you, this episode is all going to be starting up the plane. And that is it. Uh, so uh, strap yourselves in. We're going we're gonna to get you on board the plane, but you guys are going to be sitting there for a little while before we actually start moving. Feel free to skip to episode two if you just want to start from the takeoff. But otherwise, yeah, this is this is the plane uh, cockpit. We've got, you know, all the all the knobs and dials and stuff like that all sort of, you know, they're, they're, they're not flat. They're all sort of 3D and modeled and, you know. They look great. I still love the, like, fur seats, which is, like, a thing on planes that are, like, man, that is super, that's got to be super comfy. It's a long flight, so, you know, why not, right? Uh, right now, everything is off, so let's go and get some things booted up. And one of the things we can do to help us with that, with this little, uh, by the way, this, this little, like, iPad kind of thing has got so many settings to mess around with. You'll notice, for example, I have, um, if I actually mouse over something, see all the, like, tooltips in the bottom left corner? Uh, if it bothers you, that's just, I have it on on mouse hover you can totally tune it in a bunch of different ways uh i just particularly like having the tooltips because i find them very helpful uh let's get uh let's get the doors open let's get the left door open let's get the aft uh cargo doors over here and the front cargo door open we can actually see that going on by the way uh so there we go the door by the stairs is open and the cargo doors are open as well and we're going to get some cargo loaded in here uh today i do have a flight plan set up via the simbrief.com website and in this flight plan, we have, I believe it's 84, yeah, 84 passengers that we're going to load on here. Boop. And cargo weight, we don't have any proper cargo, but we do have, um, you know, luggage and things like that. So that's uh, 19,000 pounds of cargo. I guess, you know, we've got some things going on. And the fuel that we are looking to get today is 27,700 pounds of fuel, which is uh, hopefully going to be sufficient. We'll optimize the center of gravity a little bit, shuffle some things a boot, and we will ask that things start to get loaded over here. So, 
Passengers are starting to come on, fuel is starting to go, although the plane's not on yet. Let's make sure that uh, it is on so that the passengers can get some lights as they come on here. So we are going to start our checklister here. We're going to start the power-up routine over here. Now, overhead, we're going to turn on the battery. So this checklist is integrated into this plane, which I love. Because, of course, planes have all these integrated uh, all these intricate checklists for everything to make sure that a pilot doesn't forget something. Uh, but not every plane actually just ships with it, even as a PDF, which kind of annoys me. Um, you can often find some procedures online, although some of them are, you know, for different models or for real planes versus the simulated ones, which might be a little different. This has got it built in and actually has this, I think this is a visual tutorial mode button. If you turn this on, it'll actually cause the appropriate switches to glow so that it's a little easier to figure out what's going on. This battery switch, by the way, is like, it's great. Flick open the cover. Battery is on. Standby power. Auto. Lights are coming on. The plane is alive. Um, electrical power established. I believe this is just us confirming that electric power has been established. I don't know. Things are glowing, so that's probably okay. So we will go ahead and check that. You can see the fuel uh, quantity not going up. Why is this going down? Oh, on the flight plan, um, these are listed as, you know, 20.7, but here I actually have to put in the full number. Uh, let's switch the uh, center of gravity again. There we go. And do we have to hit the load button again? Yeah, let's try that again. We may actually have to just retouch the load. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, hey. We would have noticed that at some point in our checklist that this number isn't right. So we want this number to actually say 20.7, but this one we have to say 20,000. All right, let, let's continue through the checklist, and then we'll uh, we'll revisit this afterwards. Uh, bus ties are on. APU generator. We will be using that. Uh, we could not get a ground power unit out this far from the gate, which isn't true. I could just go into the, the iPad and click the button and get a ground power unit for external power, but we're going to go ahead and use the APU to do this, the auxiliary power unit. Now, if I go to the back of the plane... Notice right here, everything is, is closed up. If I go and start the APU, go to the start position, tick, 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 tick. After a second, it'll say fault over here, and then that'll go away, and then a few seconds later, it'll say run. Um, and it advises not to just let the APU selector spring back to the on position, which will happen after the APU is on for a while, after it's been started, but presumably that runs the starter longer than it needs to. So once we confirm that the APU is running, I will manually flick this back to the on position instead of waiting for it to fling, flick back normally. Uh, I think I'm getting called by the sir, Ford cabin. I think you might have forgotten to turn on the fastened seat belt sign. The passengers must stay in their seats during takeoff. Dude, I, I didn't forget. What, what are you talking about? We're nowhere close to taking off yet. Our, this, this flight attendant, really annoying sometimes. I don't know. All right, things are flickering on to life over here as the APU is actually triggering in. Okay, there we go. I'm going to retouch the load to tweak the numbers now. Thank you very much. We're reloading the plane and presumably... We will see. Yeah, there we go. Fuel's being pumped in. So they took out all the fuel, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I screwed up my decimal point. Could you please put all the gas back into the plane? We do not want to be a Gimli gl glider over here. By the way, if you don't know the story of the Gimli glider, you should really check that out. It's an excellent, awesome story. And uh, the root of it is a combination of technical problems where, where this fuel sensor was not working. Um, but they, you, they measured it. They measured the fuel, and then they screwed up a conversion from pounds to kilograms. And so it's a plane that took off with half the fuel that it was supposed to, and that ran out of fuel midair, uh, and miraculously landed with no serious injuries. Really crazy good story. Anywho, um, so that's reloading, so that's good. So that finishes our power-up routine, so let's go ahead to the next checklist. Pre-flight preliminary. Preliminary pre-flight. Uh, we are going to turn on our IRS over here to nav mode. This is the internal... No, inertial reference system, I think is what it's called. The idea is a series of, like, gyros and stuff like that, that, you know, just like, you know, the acceleration sensors in your phone that can tell if your phone is, like, tipping and whatever and being moved around. Same sort of idea. Predates, uh, in airplanes, like, GPS being installed. Especially for a long time, um, GPS, unless you were a military person, GPS had, like, a huge deviation from norm as, like, 
designed into the system as a safety precaution. Um, but this, what you do is you punch in in your your flight management system over here what your um, your actual latitude and longitude is based on like known values, and then this knows how far you actually like move as the plane moves around and so it's able to calculate where you are now it does have drift as you go but it's pretty darn good and now you use it sort of in coordination with gps as a backup as far as i know um we are going to verify that only the expected status messages are there probably also i'm getting another bong here what sir i think you might have forgotten to turn on the fastened seat belt sign the passengers must stay in their seats during takeoff yeah, I know. All right, fine. Put on the seatbelt signs. God. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe I needed to turn this on before I started uh, loading passengers or something. That's that's probably reasonable. Anyway, um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to check that that is true. Verify quantities of um, ox... Per, sure. Probably this is okay. I don't know. Check. Next checklist. Uh, CDU pre-flight. Okay, so this is going to be a bit that takes a little bit longer. This is our flight management computer. If we click on this, we get a pop-up. Actually, uh, what's great about this plane is when you're running this plane, it actually runs a little web server on your computer. You can load this up in a web browser, including on like your iPad or something like that, so that you can uh, mess with the values over there. So, now we have done a flight on the, I want to say the... The... 737-800. This plane here comes with X-Plane um, and includes an FMS, but it's the... November 01 This is the generic X-Plane. Or, sorry, left, two, on this five, one, it's left, got a generic X-Plane FMS zero, that sort of two, works with five, all of your left, planes, which runway, means it has two, no plane-specific information. Runway, two, I should go taxi and... Via two, uh, five, where's my comms? Two, right here. Five, left, oh, two, there we go. Five, left. Two, zero, we shouldn't get two, any more five, of those. Um, but two, this November, zero, uh, MCDU knows what your plane is. It's got your model, your engine. By the way, this plane comes with three different engine options. Check the date, all kinds of things. Nav data out of date is fine. Just clear that. That's going to be okay. Uh, so we've uh, we've confirmed this is okay. Uh, shirt ident page. Check. Uh, pause in it page. This is our current position. This is our IRS position. Now, we've got a couple ways to do it. We can punch in our airport. So if I said, um, so I'm at airport. If you hit this little top left corner here, it goes into keyboard uh, typing mode, which is nice. We are at, uh, oops, clear. Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo is our airport. That's Brussels Airport. And if you put in your gate or, or whatever, where you are, it's got a known location. And you can punch that into your IRS. We can also grab it from our GPS here. You can see we're just off of the center of the airport, but I'm going to trust this GPS. So if I click this, it copies it into your scratch pad, and I can paste it in here to lock in our IRS position. So I am satisfied with our pause page initiation. That's going to be okay. Let's enter our route on the RTE. Our route is... EBBR, which conveniently puts it in there for us, and we're going to E... Whoops. Got to be in keyboard mode. There we go. E... Echo Gamma. Is it Gamma? I think so. Gamma Kilo Kilo is our destination. That is Gatwick. Um, and we are going to be taking off... Now, let's pretend. I'm not going to be running with Pilot Edge, certainly, and I'm not even going to be using the in-game um, um, air traffic control, because... That's one of the areas where X-Plane does very poorly. We're going to say that we have been cleared for runway 25R, 25 right. Over here is the runway we are going to be using as a reference here. Flight number, this absolutely doesn't matter, but obviously it's way cooler. This is going to be flight Q18002 is the flight that we are on. Bam. And this is if you have a company route that uh, you want to load, which you can actually save and load these routes, by the way. Um, we're going to activate this route. Boop. Like that? Excellent. So the R key is in there. Our route is good. Departures page. So if we go to department departures arrivals here, um, and we are doing departure from EBBR, we are going to be departing from 25R over here. Um, so I just selected it. I just clicked it again to thin this. This is all the standard instrument departure routes we can take from here. We are going to be looking for some Kalo Oscar Kilo over here we're departing using uh, uh kilo oscar kilo for charlie here um and it's specifically this is going to lead us to a waypoint which is just kilo oscar kilo now if there was an e at the end i pronounced that coke otherwise I, I don't know what we'd pronounce it it's actually i think the name of town and it's you know it's i think it's um like a flemish town so it's got sort of that that sort of dutchy kind of name type thing that i can't possibly pronounce so we'll just say coke just to be a little bit more user friendly over here
So that's going to be our departure plan over here. If we execute this, we can then check, um, say, the legs at this point and not see what I'm looking for. Why four is that? I mean, there's no transition. Should this not be showing up in the light? There it is. Uh, does that seem strange to anyone else? Why didn't it go? I think we're okay. Um, hopefully everything's fine. Because, yeah, this should definitely be in here. This The legs is every step of the journey. So we're, we're going to go to t runway 25R. We are going to climb until we reach 700 feet, at which point we are going to execute a slight right turn um, and a climb to 1,700 feet until we reach uh, D280G, some reference point in, in this. Um, that's about five nautical miles away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn slightly left at that point, apparently, and fly straight to to Coke over here. Uh, so we're going to call that, I guess, fine. Runaway routing, departure routing, sure. Uh, pause ref page. That's not this page. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good there. Route is correct on the RT pages. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm worried. Maybe I punched that in twice. Via this to that. I'm hoping I did this okay. I'm wondering if... Can't possibly understand what else would have gone. If I, if I reset this, um, and I would reset this by retyping in my origin. And then retyping in... Uh, my destination. Which is... Which is what? <laughs> I just typed it in two seconds ago and I've forgotten. Oh, EG. Okay, okay. And 25R. Activate. Execute. Direct to this doesn't have the legs. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm doing this correctly. Well, I guess we'll find out when we take off and see if horrible things happen. Okay, you're good. Yep, there's nothing there. Active. Okay, I think we're okay. Yeah, we're probably fine. We're out here. Yeah, okay. And um, using simbrief.com, it has told me, it has instructed me that I am then to take a. Uh, Jetway? Is that the right term? L607, all the way to Conan. And I believe that this waypoint is actually on the English side of things. We're going to do that. Um, and then we are, well, to land depending on things. And this is real world weather that's happening right now, although technically it's nighttime in Brussels as I'm recording this, but I've got to change the in game time just so that we get, you know, daylight to wander around. Let's, um,. Let's just do this now, then maybe in flight we'll, we'll check the weather in at Gatwick and then use that to select our landing at that point. That should be okay. So that's done. Performance data, okay. So at this point we should be fully loaded. Our fuel is certainly good. So we can go and specify we're going to be cruising at an altitude of 180 for this. That's going to be our ceiling, so we're going to punch that in. Cost index is just sort of a balance between... Um, like time and performance and things like that versus fuel cost. Um, if you put in a value of zero here, it means the only thing that matters is fuel, and therefore your plane should try to fly as efficiently as possible, even if it means a longer, slower flight. Um, if you punched in like nine, 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 nine kind of thing, it means the only thing that matters is uh, time in the air that you want to minimize as much as possible and fuel is effectively free, so you'll, you'll fly much more aggressively. If we hit this button, it'll automatically load the correct zero fuel weight from here uh and we can say a certain amount i don't know this is our reserves i think at that point it lets us know that like holy shit you're about to run out of fuel man if you get down low um i think that's what those numbers do so uh that's done zero fuel weight 
and we can verify that the fuel matches 2.0.7, 2.0.7, well now 0.6 because it's gone down a bit, because we are burning fuel. I meant to show you after we started the APU, this little door comes open, and this is a little little turbine, almost like a mini engine that runs in there. It sucks in air there. This is what this, is what this butthole is for, by the way, on planes. It's the exhaust from the APU, which doesn't run when your plane is flying normally. Uh, because you're getting powers from your actual engine. Okay, that's good. Um, so fuel, good. Fuel is sufficient for flight? I don't know, probably. I have to hope that it is. Um, takeoff stats. So we're going to be taking off with uh, 5 degrees of flap. Our center of gravity we got from the packing information over here. Uh, so center of gravity there. And this suggests that we start with a trim of 2.4 per t for takeoff. So... It's not taking my joystick inputs because this is open. It's definitely not. Now I can go and trim it like this. I don't know why it's not using that. So, there must need to be something else that's on. The controls must be locked. Uh, oops, I went too far. That looks like 2.4 to me, or at least pretty darn close. So we're good there. Uh, we can de-rust our takeoff thrust. This is basically we're we're putting in a fake sort of like um, air temperature in here that's higher than the actual air temperature and it's going to cause the engines to not take off quite as aggressively since we're not we're not super heavy and we've got plenty of runway we're not worried about running out of runway so we may as well take off with a little bit less power and it makes our engines get less hot and last longer so that is done i don't know if i have to heat the, hit the complete here um center gravity done take off v speeds so uh, V1 is when we have to decide whether or not, last, this is the last minute where we can, like, decide whether or not we abandon our takeoff. VR, this is when we rotate our plane and actually lift off, and V2 is some other number. Which does get set as our first target speed over here, so I guess that's okay. Check, and next. Next up, we are pre-flight controlling. Controlling means the pilot as opposed to the co-pilot. Because technically in a plane nowadays, they're both just pilots. You just have the controlling and the non-controlling at any given time, basically. They, they swap roles quite frequently. So yaw dampers are on. Uh, system, this is our hydraulic. The pressure lights are on, I guess. Cis press lights, yeah, they're all on. Confirm that. Uh, left and right engine pumps. We're gonna turn those on. Left pump, right pump. We are now going to turn on the utility buses. This is the electrical system over here. We're going to turn on the switches for the generators. So when the engines are running, they're going to be giving power to our system. The emergency lights is going to be armed. Passenger oxygen. We're making sure that if we hit this button, the passenger oxygen masks drop in and everyone freaks out. So uh, we have checked that it is not currently enabled. Ram air turbine uh, light is not on, which is good. Ram air turbine is... Uh, something, I think it deploys underneath the plane on a 767. Drops down, it's like a little windmill. that just drops down, poof, and generates power in case your engines or some part of your electrical system die during the flight. But we don't want that out now, so we check it's not there. Engine start selectors. Uh, right here. We're going to set these both to auto. Done and done. Um, position light on. Wing light, it's not nighttime, so we don't need that. Uh, window heat on 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 uh, Cabin altitude we set you to oh they set the auto rate to something usually the use a little reference dot over here This is the rate at which your pressure changes in your cabin um, We set the rate to auto um, Oh, I have to click that it's been checked to where we want it. That's gonna be fine landing altitude uh, I don't know I'd have to double-check with Gatwick eggs, but it's pretty darn, you know, close to sea level. I call it 100. Worst case scenario, we get a slight pressure differential in our ears, but hardly a problem. Um, check. Uh, cabin temperature. Uh, just has to not be off. As far as I know, everything else is auto. We'll set it at the, the top for middle, but you could put it a little colder, a little warmer. Um, you know, depending on uh, how people are feeling. And this is our flight deck. This is for the pilots. So we're going to set it, to, you know, we'll set it a little colder. Because, you know, I like I like it cold. Uh, the trim air recirculating fans are on. Pack controls are both going to get set to auto. I believe this is the air conditioning setup. Uh, isolation air on, on, on. Not everyone thing glows all the time. Uh, bleed air switches from the engine and the APU. So at this point, ooh, nice little blink in there. It's setting up. Uh, what should be happening now is people should get plenty of air conditioning. Um, and you know what? I'm going to take this moment 
to welcome my passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain and crew would like to welcome you on board this Boeing 767-300 airliner. If you haven't already done so, please throw your carry-on luggage underneath the seat in front of you, or in an overhead bin. The flight crew will do everything possible to make your flight comfortable and enjoyable. Xplane.org, Step to Sky, and Flight Factor wish you a pleasant flight experience. Uh, we need to know what the altitude is here. Uh, what the altimeter should be set to. Um, I'm gonna just ask the tower. Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Sierra, Tango, Sierra, Echo, Bravo, Bravo, Romeo. Altimeter, two, niner, niner, two. Seriously? Echo, Bravo, Bravo, Romeo. Altimeter, two, niner, niner, two. Foxtrot, Cause that's Foxtrot, the reference altitude. Sierra, and I'm using Tango, real world Sierra. weather, so I was not expecting that. I thought it would be a little higher, a little lower. Um, I'm gonna try another tower. Foxtrot, Foxtrot. No, they're really Sierra, sure about it. Tango, Sierra, okay. Echo, Bravo, Bravo, Romeo. Altimeter, two, niner, niner, two. Echo, Bravo, Bravo, Thank you very much. Romeo. Altimeter, two, niner, niner, two. Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Sierra. Now, Tango, what I'm gonna do Sierra. here is. I'm just gonna screw the, um, the radio frequency up so we don't hear anyone else on the radio because I don't like people. Okay, so yeah, so this is the, the altitude, uh, the air pressure here, and you want to calibrate this because it's how you know what the correct altitude um, is. Like this, uh, what the correct, uh, yeah, what your correct air pressure, what your correct altitude is based on your air pressure. Um, and there's a little screw that you can click here in the simulator, which will sync all the altimeters together so you don't have to um, set them all up, which is good. Okay, well, that's done. Um... Flags are fine. Sure, everything's okay. Auto land status indicator. Make sure the indications are blank. Well, it just says no auto land here. But I think that's okay. Um, upper ECAS display. I think every warning that we're seeing is to be expected. Secondary engine notifications. Yep, everything looks good there. Status display. Select. Uh, computer select to auto. Decision height selector. Um, we'll set it to like 100 feet. This is when we have to decide whether or not we abandon the landing. Check terrain switch. Uh, yeah, we'll turn that on over here. So that'll give us a terrain display here once we start, uh, once we lift off. Uh, HSI range, we can set it to whatever we want. We'll send it 10 nautical meters, miles. That's going to be fine. Uh, the traffic switch, if we hit the button in the middle of this little thing, uh, now this is going to show us traffic, i.e. other airplanes in front of us. Um, it's warning us that our TCAS is currently off right now, which means we're not tra uh, transmitting proper traffic information, but that's okay right now. Uh, yeah, all of our communications panel, everything is set properly. We don't care. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Engine fire panel. I'm sure we won't have an engine fire. That's happened to me once already. Uh, transponder panel. Sure. ILS panel. So down here, this is our tuning for ILS that we're going to use, but we don't know what runway we're going to be landing in, so we don't know what frequency or what course we're going to be setting for that um, yet. I mean, hopefully, it's probably going to be... Well, if there's no wind, just we'll just aim probably for pi uh, runway 26. Uh, I think it's 26 on our way there, because that'll be the right direction for us, but depending on the wind, we might swing around the other way. Uh, so we'll just say that it's okay for now. Um, yeah, communication panel done. Next, so this is pre-flight not controlling. This is the co-pilot's job. I'm going to finally use this auto button over here, which is going to cause the system to automatically go through and set things. The only thing I have to do is check values, but I'm going to assume that all these are okay. Because this is just a co-pilot's equivalent. Okay, next, before start. So we have locked the flight deck door. The door behind us is locked. You can't actually unlock it, which is interesting. Um, takeoff thrust reference, uh, that's all okay. The V1, V2, VR is all set. We've done that earlier. IAS mock selector is set to V2, which is our correct thing. Arm LNAV as needed. Yeah, I'll turn that on. That's going to be fine. Uh, initial heading. Our initial heading out of here is going to be... Um... 244. We're, we're leaving on, high, on runway 25, but it's actually lined to 244. So I will, in fact, set our heading to that because we could just fly uh, heading hold mode uh, for our departure. Um, that's done. Initial altitude. So in our legs, um, I mean, really, I don't know. This thing is just like we're going to hit this marker at 1,700 feet. And then after that, we can climb right to our flight level. 
Um, I guess I'll set this to 1700 in case there's anything that goes weird with the VNAV. We'll set it there and then push it up later. We'll do that. Okay, sure. Check. That's going to be okay. Um, hydraulic panel. Okay, time to close this. Time to get our engines nearly there. Uh, right electric pump is this one. Well, that's right one. Sorry, he's over here. Set it to auto. C1, C2, switches. Left pump, auto. Uh, center pump, auto. Fuel panels, pump. I guess these are... What are these? Airs? Electrics? I don't know. They're things. More pumps. Red anti-collision light. Recall switch is right here. Just confirm that there's nothing weird. Everything's okay. Trim. We did indeed set the trim to where we want it, so that's a check. Next is the engine start. Now, at this point, I would normally ask for a pushback. Um, are my passenger doors closed? Did I close that at some point? Maybe that's what ha one of the things that happened on auto. Because, yeah, the passenger door is definitely closed. Okay, well, let's get rid of the vehicles that are around us. Fuel truck, chocks, passenger bus, and stairs are all gone. Uh, we're going to go and close all of our doors over here. It's funny that that's not something on the checklist. Does it seem odd to anyone else? I think it does. Um, Attention all flight attendants. Door starts automatic. Do the safety demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen, we request your full attention as the flight attendant. Okay, so now we're being pushed back, and now we are going to start our engines. So we need to make sure the secondary engine mode is set here. We're going to turn off the packs, which I think is just the air conditioning kind of thing. Uh, pack off here. Left engine, set it to ground mode, which should get us started. If we look here, N2 is starting to rise for the left engine. Once it gets above 15, that means it's spinning up at this point. We can go outside and check the left engine. It is starting to spin from the sort of the starter is what's making this turn. Getting some air to pump in and everything. It's over, definitely over 15, so we can go and add some actual fuel in here. And now... This engine is actually on. Wait, why is the... Oh, the bleed air, I think, is what's making those turns. Sorry, my bad. I was looking at the wrong thing. But the left engine, not the right engine, is actually on and burning. We're just waiting for it to reach idle. Just waiting for N1 to come up to speed and, and be comfortably idle here. Your head and breathe normally. Although the bag does not inflate... Oxygen is flowing to the mask. There you go. You can see some of these warnings going away. Idle is confirmed. Assistance. Let's start the right engine. Your mask on first, Click it to ground. The other go back down to here. Watch N2 come up. Pressure is coming up. Oil temp. Yeah, we're going to keep a close eye on this. <laughs> There's a good good chance we'll have some problems here, by the way. Done. your feet are flat on the floor. A life vest is located in a pouch under your seat. Starting up. Between the armrests. When instructed to do so, the exhaust open temperature the pouch kind of thing. Remove the vest. Slip it goes up quite a bit on the start. The is it going to come right back down? And there it is. The okay, good. To inflate the, vest. the flicker here because our engine generators are kicking in. So there was just a little bit of uh, electronic noise. We'll be able to turn off the APU the soon. Pieces. Use the whistle and light to attract attention. Also... Your seat bottom cushion can be used as a flotation device. All the so as soon as it's a little north of uh, 20 over here, it's going to confirm that we have reached idle properly. The following electronic devices. More warnings going away. CD players, laptop Done. Okay, idle is complete. Engine start complete. Before taxi, we're going to turn off the APU. We no longer need the APU to generate power for us. So that's going to turn off, which should go and close this little door here. Um, unless that's the bleed door. That's possible. We don't need anti ice, so we'll just hit check. Pack selectors, we're, oh yeah, put them back on auto so we can get our air conditioning flowing again. Um, isolation switches off, off, APU, we don't need you anymore. Check the status display. Everything looks fine. 
Flap lever is checked. Set it for takeoff. We want five degrees of flap, uh, which apparently we have. Okay, apparently we've got. Must have been left over from somewhere, something previous. Check. Flight control check. That's working. That's working. Yep. Check. Transponder. Um, presumably at this point, it, we've been told, you know, some sort of transponder frequency. So let's say check. Taxi lights. Turn on. And next checklist is going to just be the before takeoff. So we can now freely taxi to where we're going next. Do we want to use any more passenger announcements? Now we're fine. Seatbelts on. We're going to start moving. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the seatbelt sign. Please return to your seats and fasten your seatbelt. Okay, we're going to release the brake. Apply a little bit of juice. Excellent. So, we are going to want to head over to the taxiway that's just over here, past the grass. Right over there. And just follow that to the end, and that'll get us to runway 25R. My lovely little West Jet plane. The only Canadian livery I could take. I could have taken something else. There's a nice Lufthansa. There's a KLM. Uh, there's a few others. I don't know. Well, I'll have to see about downloading some. But this is all that... Uh, I think 8 came with the plane. And I mean, they're not bad. I gotta say, the WestJet one might be a little plain. Ah! It's a plain plane. But we're okay. Do Yeah, and for some reason, I found the... I don't know if it's just X-Plane or something else that's going on or what. Woo, did I ever do that a little slow. Um, but th I find this, uh, this flight camera is really wobbly for some reason. I haven't been able to figure out why that is. Why we got the extra wobble in the flight camera here. Okay. So, this video was 36 minutes of me getting the plane moving. Well, basically moving. We're going to put a cut in here. Next episode, we are going to take off from Brussels Airport here in Belgium, which is very, very lovely. I think we can all agree. Thanks for watching, folks. And I'll see you guys next time.